All right, so I'm back with another video on the 22 TTR 125. I made a few more changes since last time, as you can probably tell. So I'm gonna go over a few of those changes I've made. Um, I've still kind of stayed away from the engine, which is kind of on my list, but I'm not too sure. Um, first, I told myself no. I'm like, I'm just gonna use this bike for what it is, and then I'm like, nah, I think I'm gonna make some changes. So the big board kit is is uh, it's on my to do list. So I'll go over why I've held off on a few things that I've already bought, but um, just kind of putting it off until I decide 100% if I'm gonna go with the big board kit or not. But to get started, as you can see, and this is probably the most pain in the ass, actually everything I've seen to be changed on this bike becomes a pain in the ass to change. Well, I went with a, a tall seat, went with the tall seat there. So I got this tall seat, I got the cushion from uh, Mojo Moto, I believe online and the uh right here the i get all my seat covers from moto seat i kind of went trying to keep the theme the same gray white blue and black um this little little piece right here it's kind of pissing me off because i mean i had this thing strapped tight when i'm stapling in it and i get everything done everything's matched up i think i took the staples out like three times just to get it aligned correctly to how i wanted it still everything feels great it feels tight but that little piece right there has been bothering me so like on the other side everything is smooth everything is smooth and the seat looks really good uh in my opinion i, I love uh, moto seats covers and the tall seat really gives this bike more of that more of that yz look uh and plus i'm 511 and it just feels a hundred times better on this bike to have that uh that tall seat and to go along with a few other changes i made so i did the uh fork springs and the shock spring by bbr so i mean i can feel somewhat of the difference it still needs to be uh adjusted a bit but it looks good on there you know kind of kind of an uh, accent color you know with that red right there so uh, i did the fork springs and I did the shock spring. I um, also went, you know, I'm kind of liking BBR's upgrades, um, their uh, aftermarket parts. I went with the uh, factory edition BBR chain guide. The, these bikes don't come with chain guides. They come with like, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, a protector kind of, but it doesn't actually guide the chain. It's just kind of sitting on the outside. So went and replaced that. Looks really good. It says TTR 125 on it. Gives the bike just a little better look goes with my graphics kit and everything like that oh i went with the ims shifter and removed the stock linkage there so all that stock linkage is gone which what that does is puts puts this shifter about about an inch forward from the stock shifter which uh really helps me because i'm a little bit of a taller rider for the bike and like these bikes are definitely built for I mean, if you if you upgrade a few things, it, it makes it much easier for a taller, bigger uh, person to ride it. So, and these five wide foot pegs. So the wide foot pegs, they look really good by, uh, I think I found them, uh, Pro Cycle, DRC wide foot pegs. Look really good, feel really good. You know, so that in combination with the uh, IMS shifter makes world of difference for a bigger foot which i have <laughs> so we're going along the bottom there i got the ttr 125 uh i mean the bbr chain guide drc wide foot pegs and i'm gonna actually grab the other foot pegs to show you the difference let me grab those really quick all right so went and grabbed stock foot peg kind of show you the difference there how wide it is Super easy to replace. Pop the cotter pin out. It uses all the same uh, mounting equipment as the stock foot peg. As the stock foot peg. Yep, went on super simple. Um, that combined with the IMS shifter sticking out about an inch. My size 11 foot. Fits perfectly on the bike now. Super easy to shift. And um, looks really good too. So, one of my favorite things that I've upgraded so far on the bike is this trail tech vapor i guess you call it a dash 
something like that. It's got a, um, and I kind of mounted mine. I noticed a lot of people mounted theirs up here, but you see, I got a lot going on up here with my little light I installed and stuff. I'll go over that in a second, but I kind of mounted mine. There we go, right there on the, right there on the handlebars. And you see, I had to get rid of the, my electric start, but I did not because it is right. It is. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. So when I turn it on, I got to get all the way under there and press it, but super easy. So I mounted mine's here. Looks really good. Um, what was I going to say about this thing? Damn. Oh. Yeah. So it shows. Let me see. I can uh, a little history of my speed in there. There we go. 33 miles an hour. I've only tested it just a little bit, but um, I'm going to fire it up and show you how it kind of reads the uh, RPMs of the bike. Um, and the way I got that wired is right here on the spark plug wire. I went ahead and wrapped that around the spark plug wire. So it's kind of sensing all that good stuff in there. Sensing the piston going up and down, sensing the spark shooting off and all that. So uh, to properly read the RPMs and it has a backlight which lights up really good once I fired on it uses the battery inside of here it has a battery inside of there so it does not drain your battery because I did have to take the entire bike apart and wire it so I took all the plastic off seat off and everything and I wired it to my battery so it's under there and I got everything kind of going down there and that's how I had to wire the um, headlight too as well so everything's wired to my battery one little look at the bike looks great um, so when I turn the bike on the backlight comes on and looks really good but like i said it conserves battery so it does not drain conserves power so it does not drain your battery i don't know why the thing keeps unfocusing so um it reads the go around to the other side it reads the uh speed by this little this little there we go that little um nut right there goes past eh, that little sensor right there and i ran that all the way up i ran it with a brake brake line brake cable let me get a good front look at that bike that ah, looks good look at that so can barely, can barely even tell it's there um actually then i ran it behind it once i got up here uh, i have no issues with movement this is kind of jimmy rig so don't worry about that but um it's a trail bike so i got all my cords from this thing running down there nice and electrical taped and running all the way down and behind there and all that good stuff so no issues there so it determines uh, the speed by how many t revolutions that wheel makes going past that sensor. And it seems to be pretty accurate. Um, so let me go back around and flip this bike on so I can show you how that thing lights up there. Let me get that. The only pain in the ass thing I'm worried about, or I'm not worried about actually that I have to change is uh, getting to, since I have so much going on up here, where's my choke? It's somewhere down there. Hey there, look at that. Mm, choke's down there. So. The only issue that poses is when I'm starting it. But if I do the big bore kit, it, it puts the choke back down on the carb and we have no issues there. So see if I can get my choke up. Yeah. Get that choke up. Where are we at? Where are we at? Somewhere down there. There we go. All right, get up to the front. Can't even see anything. One second. Get this thing to fire up. Fire up. Where my little button? See, we'll get down here. And where we at? Move out of my way. I don't know if I have the choke all the way up. Oh, that is a pain in the ass. All right, I'm gonna come back to you in one second after I get that thing up. All right, so I think I got it up. Where is it? Oh, it went down a little bit. Let's see if it starts now. Nope, still don't got it all the way up. All right, I got it on. I'm gonna hold the choke open for a second. But yeah, this is this is gonna go. That's the whole choke assembly is gonna get removed and put down on the carburetor because, like I said, it's doable, but it's just irritating. And there we go, we got the trail tech. See the RPMs there? 
tank going good now wind and it can read the outside temperature but i did not hook up the engine temperature uh which it has an option to but i didn't not, the wire was too short so i didn't want to deal with that so i'm kind of letting the choke go a little bit so it's on by itself right now came with a nice little little keychain see i had to rewire my ignition down here so that's kind of annoying but any change i made to this bike almost i had to make like three or four of the changes just to get it to work like this is my uh headlight switch so while this thing is warming up i'm down i can just hit the headlight switch and i'll show you how bright that is and uh, i'll show you some nighttime shots of that but that hooked my battery as well let me see if i can get a nice i mean it's super bright if you see those nighttime shots so yeah something see with the fat bars i went with the, the mika metals uh fat bars so one and one eight to the seven eight bar so i ran out of a lot of bar space in my backlight i think it's on actually i think the backlight is on now maybe so um see if that choke is ready to go down get a little bit of focus going there and see watch those rpms drop where is it at look at that see Nice idle there. Mm -hmm. See, it's working good. So, lights on. I bet I can get like something to finesse and Jimmy rig up to get this to a nice little area. But for now, it's tucked in there. It is a quick on and off switch. So that had to get right wired to that one's down here. Uh, where's that? Right there. So I got that all wired up. Run under the entire bike under the seat. loving the bike like everything's coming together it's looking really good Get a little nice shot of his back sun in my sun rays there you go all right so exhaust i love the way this stock exhaust looks not gonna lie that black looks really good and it just gives that bike look that I love but I did order uh, this uh, FMF power core 4 get a little look at that yep so I ordered the FMF power core 4 um, here's the thing I don't really like the, the aluminum look like this black looks really good. But the reason why I'm not putting it on there yet is because if I do the big bore kit, wait, wait, first of all, besides doing the big bore kit, if I even put that on there, I gotta rejet the carb anyway, and I'm a person who hates dealing with jetting carbs. So if I put that on there now without the big bore kit, I'll have to rejet the carb. If I put a big bore kit on there, I'll have to buy another carb, a bigger one, and rejet that one again. So right now I don't wanna deal with nothing with the engine, no rejetting and no carbs right now. So that one's staying off for now until I just make up my mind exactly the route I want to go and then we'll see from then if uh, I want to throw the FMF on there. I actually bought two of those so I'm probably just gonna sell the other one because I accidentally bought one without the spark arrestor and then the one I bought without the spark arrestor I lost in the mail for like two two months or something like that and so I bought one with the spark arrestor and then all of a sudden one day the one without the spark arrestor shows up on my doorstep so I was like, hey, now I got two of these things. Uh, also, I talked about in my last video. These, uh, hold on, let me show you something real quick, see if it. Look at that, look at that, look at that, yes, 
see? So it works. But I'm gonna kill the bike for now because I'm finishing the video. All right. I moved that brake lever up a little bit. So it's kind of protected by the, the um, it's fully protected by this bar, but it's kind of protected by that front guard there. But went on Amazon, bought some cheap FTRT. Let's see, and, and I hate buying anything uh, anodized aluminum because the colors never match. So I bought these short brake levers, braking clutch levers, so I can get it to focus. So, it, I mean, it looks on video like it really matches, but it, it's it's off. You can see it right there. It's, it's off. So, anyways, I'm going to get a good look at the size difference there, which would get rid of that issue of I had to begin with of those being too long and too flimsy. But I... I'm an impulse buyer, so um, I couldn't decide if I wanted the ASV levers or these guys. So I haven't put those on yet, because I don't know yet. So that's another piece that I have kind of just sitting around waiting for a decision. So between that, oh, and the, the light. Let me tell you how I did this. This light. Harbor Freight. The Roadshock LED 6-inch spotlight. 30 bucks at Harbor Freight. Man, I was just racking my brain like, what can I do? And how much do I want to spend on a light setup? And man, am I glad I went with this $30 setup because this thing is bright. And it has not failed me yet. So, yeah. Road Shock LED. Six inch spotlight. Perfect. Perfect. So, good choice on that. So if you're gonna pick one of those up, you have to buy a, um, a wiring kit. It does not come with a wiring kit. Does not come with a wiring kit. Uh, eh. There's a wiring kit right there. Light bar wiring kit goes for UTVs, ATVs, trucks, cars, whatever you wanna throw in there. We hooked the, uh, one up on my buddy's car. Once he saw this light, he's like, oh, I want one. So we hooked it up on his car and stuff. So everything worked good. I did have to cut the wiring kit. It was like 20 feet long. So I cut it down and stuffed everything in there. No issues with turning or anything like that. So yeah, um, oh, the light wouldn't stay still. I got it drilled into the, not drilled, screwed into the uh, the number plate hole. It's hard to see down there. So screwed in there, and then this is keeping it from swaying side to side, because it was going side to side. Even in that number plate hole, it was like all over the place. So it's stuck now. I don't care what nobody think, because it do look Jimmy rigged, but oh well. Uh, ended up putting my wire ties on here. Grip ties, whatever you want to call them. So, grips ain't going nowhere. So yeah, bike turned out looking good. Still a few more things to make, so let me do a rundown real quick. It did the tall seat, the seat cover, the chain guide, the DRC foot pegs, the wide, DRC wide foot pegs, the IMS shift lever, extended shift lever, uh, BBR shock spring, and BBR forks with 15, uh, fork springs with 15 weight oil, the Road Shock LED headlight, and the Trail Tech Vapor Digital Dash thingamajig. I think, I think that's it, man. Like, so yeah, I'm definitely been putting some work into this bike and it is a blast riding on the trails. I need you to get some trail videos up of me riding because I'm doing all these videos of of talking and doing upgrades but you don't see me riding but i got a little bit of property so i kind of ride around the property but you need to get on some trails and get some good videos and this thing blasting but uh if i say my favorite upgrade on this the tall seat uh most annoying is the tall seat cover I'm trying to get that to wrap around but it was super easy to get uh moto seat to send me a uh tall seat cover just called them and let them know that when i ordered it to can you make that a tall seat and they went and whipped it up i love moto seat Seats look great, great quality, and it's really giving a great look to my bike. Well, see you guys in the next video. Should be a riding video at that point, and uh, let you know if I go with the the BBR big bore kit. If anyone has the big bore kit, let me know how you like it. You know, is it worth the upgrade? How much more power, how much more torque bottom end does it give these bikes? I'm not looking for, I mean, it's a, it's a TTR 125. I'm not looking, I'm just looking at trail ride with a little bit more power 
possibly, but I'm, I really don't even have complaints about the stock power of this bike. So if you got a big board kit on your TGR 125, let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, let me know in the comments. And, you know, like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Let me know what you think of the bike. One more last shot of it. Oh, man, that little bubble. right? It's not even a bubble. It's just a crease that the light shows. It's annoying. All right, I'm out.